Okay, so we are currently demoing next a game known as the Lost Vikings Demo. This is from a cover disc of the One Amiga magazine, uh, issue May 1993. And there's a high probability, in fact it's certain, that this is exclusive. An exclusive demo to the One Amiga, because I did not see this one in any other magazines. So... Everything seems to be loading okay. Usually some cover discs will give you like a menu beforehand, but seeing as though this is the only demo on the disc, it just puts you right into it. Okay, so here we go, 1992 to 93, Interplay Productions. I have to pronounce Silicon and Synapse included. So, um, options, music on, sound on, that sounds good to me. Um, password, I think you can, yeah, it's a four level demo and it does give you passwords to those levels, but we'll leave that for now, invalid, because we did not do anything. So yeah, let's roll on to a new game. It certainly is, yep. I know what some time ago they did like a Blizzard anniversary which included... I think it included like all the variations of the Lost Vikings as well as a few other games as well. Although actually saying that, I think they, the only one they may have excluded was the Amiga version. They did the other ports, I think like the SNES and the Genesis. I suppose those ones were more popular, but uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe they didn't think it was worth it because the Amiga port... Whilst I feel it has better music, it was lacking backgrounds as well. Which, yeah, I don't know why they went with that decision. Or could be a memory problem. So here we go. My name is Eric the Swift. I can run like the wind and leap tall huts in a single bound. It's time for me... Uh, I think it's always called Balrog, or I think it's Balog, or Balog, Balog, I think. Balog. His logs are bare. But yeah, it starts you off with a story and like a wee like introduction of what each individual Viking can do. Balrog. Cloud dude, how's it going? Hope all is well. I always, for some reason, I always see like the E as an R. I don't know. I've always called him like Balrog for so many times since I was a kid. But Balrog. I have to keep that one in mind. So yeah, as you can see, Olaf can defend pretty much anything with his shield. So this is Balrog the Fierce. It's like with Deus Ex. For ages I just called it Deus Ex. And I thought Deus, yeah, that kind of makes more sense. I mean, it should be pronounced D. Well, it should be. The title should be actually like D A Y dash U S, but I digress. So, yeah, welcome to the tutorial slash mini story. Uh, lots of things are around, including Vikings, giant snails, giant stakes in midair, blue lizard dinosaur things. I keep. Reminding myself to, um, yeah, there is a sequel to this, isn't there? Lost Vikings 2, unfortunately, was not on the Amiga. Which I thought was kind of gutting. But, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to have a look at that one. Because I think you could be other characters as well, not just the, um, you know, the usual trio. I don't know, maybe their little like adventure journey hunting would have been a lot easier if they just started off moving left instead of right. Another successful day of hunting. Life is good. I hope I never have to leave my beloved village. V. 
village that consists of three houses. So yeah, as you can tell, we are running this um, not so much on the Amiga Workbench hard drive, but uh, just on standalone discs. Um, and that's, that's hence all the loading and stuff. So this is, I'm sort of like replicating what I kind of went through as a child. There was, um, I'm, yeah, for some reason, Lost Vikings especially, especially was a very loady game. It only came on two discs as well. So yeah, basically suck up the spaceship has uh, taken three of our beloved Vikings and um, yeah, and thus the game begins. But yeah, how about that? An actual story on an actual demo. You don't often get stuff like that. Well, dude, thank you very much for the 20 uh, stream streak. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Oh, yes, and that is, yep, <laughs> the image of the disc and the loading. Here we go. So, this is the first lemon. Ah, uh, first lemon. Yeah, no, I think you still think of Lemon Amiga. Uh, okay, so the first level is. Uh, guys, have a bad feeling about this. So, yeah, you do not want to go into that electricity. That will just kill you immediately. However, easy enough to jump over. And, uh, yeah, if we approach these question marks, here we go. You can get hints if you stand next to these buttons and press S. So, if we go over to the question mark and press S, it obviously gives us the same message. So, let's uh, go up and... Oh, turns out we've already done the level. At least Eric has. All of us must reach the exit to escape. Press delete or help to switch to my buddies. Which just so happened to be very close by. So now we have control of uh, Bell, uh, Bell Log. And um, yeah, it's... um. So that's the bit that's kind of fascinating. It alternates you between each character. You don't, um, you can't, you don't control them all at once. It's just like one at a time. So yeah, we briefly showcase their skill set. Uh, Bell Log will defeat the alien. Actually, you don't have to. You can just like avoid him. Eric will jump over the, the electricity, and Olaf will use his shield to um, bounce off the lasers. Uh, why does the emulation make the disk drive noises? Uh, because you can set it to that. You've got the option of enabling them or disabling them. I like to um, enable them because one. I don't know, it just feels more authentic to me. And two, just so I know if a game, you know, is still like in the process of loading, at least I know that it's working. Whereas if it's sort of, if I don't hear that sound, I feel like something's gone wrong with the disc. Uh, so once it all, so yeah, you gotta get all the three Vikings to the exit. 
Um, if one of them dies, yeah, it's like an immediate game over. Although you can continue, you know, exploring the remainder of the level. Uh, so, what are we doing here? Quote of Balrog. And uh, Olaf, I don't know. Will you guys just shut up and follow me? So every time they go to an exit, there's a witty bit of dialogue, which, oh, I loved as a kid. I thought it was just straight up funny. Now it's it's still quirky. It's still mildly amusing. And it gives the characters a bit more character. They're not just sprites that move left and right. They got a bit of personality too. Okay, and it looks like we're off to a great start as, uh, yeah, as told by this password. So here we go. This is level two of four. I mean, you could technically, yeah, you could actually say that this is just a three level demo and the first one is just like more of an intro sort of thing. So here we go. We're greeted with two question marks. To select an item, press a tab and then move over to your uh, flashing box over the item, press tab to exit. And to use a selected item, press E. So again, this is another thing that I like. Like um, older games, or even newer ones, you sort of had to refer to the manual all the time. And there is still a manual with the game as well, if you buy the full thing. But I do, I do really like that it gives you like instructions of what to do during the levels i think that is a really good idea you know like it tells you just enough you know just what you need to know it doesn't go you know it doesn't go full crazy with it either so here we go another question mark press s to push switches and oh sorry push buttons and flip switches and talk to other characters and apparently this qualifies as a character, some kind of flappy red alien thing. So there you go, you look awfully happy. What are you? I am Aftik, are you the janitor? What's a janitor and how do I get out of here? You must destroy the ship's computer. This is not a ship. And what's a computer? Never mind, you must find bombs to blow it up. So it's like, it's almost like he's telling us what to do and not the characters, because, yeah, that was a. I do like dialogue, dialogue like that. It's just it's random and silly. Oh, yeah, and it looks like we've picked up two tomatoes. I think they're supposed to be tomatoes. If our health ever gets depleted, we can just use the, our inventory to eat some of those. Well, so if you need instructions on how to go through the hotels, check out the enclosed instruction book, Mary. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, in the game's defense, that's what manuals were for. You know, because otherwise you get people complaining what to do. It's like, well, maybe have a look at the manual. It sort of encouraged you to sort of, you know, read and stuff. Just was a bow there. So yeah, even though this is just a second level, it's actually quite a long one, quite a lengthy level. Okay, and you see that we could just uh, walk right through that one. That's because we got some. Um, we could only carry four items at a time. Oh, here we go. Stand on the elevator and move up or down, but before that we want to get all our Vikings across. So 
something to do on the bus on the way home. Yeah, like, um, I know my parents would tell me off because I'll be, like, uh, reading the manual as everyone else was, like, you know, trying to eat their dinner. Just, like, so absorbed with it all. Okay, so let's have Olaf read this message. Belnog the Fierce is a stud. He can use his arrows to toggle switches as well as to defeat monsters. To shoot an arrow, press D. So, yep, this is Belnog's territory. Because, yeah, obviously if you, you know, touch your electricity, you will die on the spot. And here we go. To trade an item, press Tab and then press F over the item. Now give the item to a nearby Viking, press tab to exit. So shall we demonstrate that? So there we go. I think you can press fire as well, but uh, to F, move over there and then tab again. There we go. So now Belnog has possession of a bomb. And I like to think that this is the same guy that we spoke to earlier. It goes, Psst, bomb, use on computer. But yeah, subtle hint there, in case we forgot to do already. So what we do, we press tab, and then, I think it's tab again, and then E. There we go. And yeah, obviously we've got to stay, steer clear of the explosion as well, because um, yeah, if we do, we, again, we die immediately. Uh, best anti-piracy measure is requiring to use a manual to even yes 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 like i mean the most common ones was like find the word on page x word x yeah paragraph whatever okay and you said something else crutonian security will be looking for you you will only survive if you work as a team and we get a beat root for our trouble but more importantly yeah, the reason why we needed to blow up that bomb was because I uh, remember that, that there was like an electrical wall there now that that has gone thanks to the destruction of the computer. So yeah, no more hints now, but uh, there's a switch, so we press S on that. So that will activate the gravitational field, I think that's what it's called. So if we just stand back there. So it's almost like this level's divided into two halves. First bit's like explaining every little detail what you have to do. And then this half is like, I guess you could say, okay, it's getting a little bit serious now. So this is where alternating between characters becomes quite essential. Okay, so this level is finally done, and there are two more levels to go. So here we go, we've got more conversation on the on the way. Stick close to me, I will lead the way. You wouldn't know which way to lead if you had a map. 
If you two don't stop fighting, I'm going to have to bring you both. So yeah, that classic of Viking banter. But yep, thank you for the GGs. Yeah, some of the levels are, you know, they're like really long, really tough. Some of them like act as their own game. If it, like you, it feels like, like, I remember back then, like some levels would just take me absolutely forever to figure out, like weeks, I kid you not, weeks to figure out. So when it felt like beating that level, it felt like beating the game or just like a massive portion of it. So uh, yeah, what's going on now? Suddenly we're um, thrown into space and tumbling downward. So I think that's how space works. been picking up and putting down my drink for ages now because I know that if I start to slurp out of it you will hear that in all its slurpy glory. And here we go we have moved on to a sort of foresty kind of world now. Password double L M zero. Okay, there we go. That was intense. Yeah, what a ride. I think I'm gonna be sick. So yeah, welcome to the forest world. And um, yeah, this one's actually fairly short, but uh, yeah, not without its hazards. However, there's a few secrets here too. So this is a smart bomb. Uh, for a hidden wall there. So yeah, there's a lot, as well as food and like essential plot items. Um, we get special ones as well. So this is a smart bomb, use that in a similar way, press tab and then tab again and then E. And that'll destroy everything on the screen. So yeah, quite satisfying. So this jump is a little bit awkward, but uh, yeah, just gotta get fairly close here. So we now have a red and yellow key in our possession. Can we go through here? Yeah, yes we can. Okay, so, and that's, um, well, I'll show you what this one does. Probably not as, this, yeah, more sort of sophisticated than destructive. This is a shield, and when you activate that, you'll notice that you have like a blue circle of energy alongside your three usual ones. So, um, yeah, it's essentially a bonus hit point. And then, yeah, otherwise um, the Viking's health won't normally uh, go beyond three, unless you get the shield. Okay, so, uh, believe it or not, this is a wall that you need to smash. Now, keep in mind that it doesn't actually tell you that in the, tut in the tutorial. However, in the full game, um, there's uh, four beginning space levels. And on the third level, that when it that's the bit where it sort of tells you more about Eric's skills and Olaf's skills as well. But here it's like, well, figure it out. So there we go. So keep in mind, you can't bash all the walls, only certain ones. In some levels, it's more obvious than others. And you'll notice that the enemies that we are encountering are indeed identical to the ones we saw in the introduction not too long ago. So basically, the blue lizard dinosaur will, you know, he basically paints his left and right. If he sees you, he'll just like go straight towards you. And if you are if you are defenseless, yeah, he can kill you very, very quickly. Uh, as for the snail, he'll constantly spit acid at you. Um, they take two hits now, by the way, the enemies in the um, in the forest. And um, the snail cannot be killed 
uh, with arrows from behind because their shell yeah provides like immuni immunity to that probably not the, an ideal place but now we can that's fine that's fine so yeah just to demonstrate arrows do nothing but you can still use your sword Now we want Olaf across here. The waterfall is for um, is foreground. There's no like hidden traps behind that, thankfully. So keep in mind that Eric collected two keys at the start, and we're going to need to use both of them down here. So that opens one door. Uh, quickly switch back to Bell Log. I think that's all the enemies now. So let's go back to um, Eric. Get ready to use the other key. And uh, yeah, if it's a similar concept to what we faced earlier on in the space level, where there was electricity in front of a button. But uh, yeah, here we go. Just push your switches down here, and two bridges are lowered. And when I say push, I mean use the arrows on them. So yeah, another sort of shortish level, but uh, not without its challenge. It's nice to be outside again. Those blue lizards were kind of cute. Even, we just saw them in the tutorial. They, they were in your home world. It's like, yeah, when they weren't trying to eat us. So yeah, it's a it is a very good example of a good demo. Uh, when you think that back then, uh, even going back with beavers, you know, it was a fine enough demo, but um, you could finish that one quite quickly. This one feels like, even though it's just a demo, it does feel like a mini adventure. I think perhaps made more with the loading. I don't know. For me, when I hear the 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 game load more and more, it just sort of builds up the tension certainly did when I first played it. But you probably noticed the lack of background as well. Because with the space level, you know, you got all like the spacey background. It looked, you know, definitely like a space environment. Whereas, yeah, for some reason, with the forest and every world after that, they just gave you a black background, which, when you start getting into the game, it doesn't really matter. It's just more like a personal, why did they do that sort of thing. But yeah, it's a little problem, honestly. Okay, so final level. We're kind of like, well, we're still technically in the same world, but uh, the graphics has changed a bit. It's sort of like a very stony, purpley atmosphere. I think there's one or two secrets here as well. Let's just have a little search around. Not here. Was it over here? No, I might be thinking of another level. Yeah, I might be thinking of another stage. But yeah, at the same time, demonstrating Olaf's ability of floating. Uh, which you'll find out is very essential on this part. So yeah, obviously don't unlock the blue key just yet, unless, hang on a moment, let's get prepared for it.
So yeah, the solution to this one is not really that obvious. But what we also need to do is uh, get Eric to jump over here. And yeah, just as well, it gives us some energy because sometimes you will lose... Yeah, when the Vikings fall too far, you will lose some health. And this is another false wall. Watch out for that snail. That's okay. We can use the stake to replenish our health. Yeah, big stakes always um, replenish up to two health. But, um... And I'm just trying to find a safe section so yeah we need eric to go across there and grab that key actually there might be another way around it i think that i think um yeah there might be two ways to do this puzzle but uh yeah that's one of them So yeah, obviously we need that red key, but that's guarded by an uh, inferno. So yeah, fire causes two damage. Um, yeah, because it's pretty destructive. It's a, it's fire. What do you expect? Yet yeah, laser only does like one damage. You think laser would be more of an insta kill? But hey, I guess three time traveling Vikings isn't going to be about realism. So yeah, check these guys out with kind of Sonic wannabes. You can't kill them with the bow when they're in spinning form. I don't even think you can kill them with the sword either. I just check. Yeah, it just sort of bounces them back. Ah, I think it was this bit. There we go. It takes you like to a little shortcut bit there. So, um, you notice that we picked up um, like a joint of ham. That will just increase your health by one. We also picked up a fire arrow. What does the fire arrow do? Well, for starters, Olaf can't use it, so we'll give it to someone who can. And then just have uh, Bell Log highlight the arrow tab and E and now we have flaming arrows what's so good about flaming arrows well they down enemies in one go okay now that the post is clear we get Eric back up there Another cool thing about the f the fire arrows is that it can bypass a lot of defenses as well. So yeah, normally the arrow would have been immune to his like a rolling form, but uh, yeah, the fire arrow completely destroys that. Got a shield for our efforts. Probably don't need it, but uh, we'll take it anyway. Oh yeah, I forgot about the snail. So normally when you attack him from behind with the bow, he's immune to that, but with the fire arrow gets destroyed. So yeah, very useful thing to find, especially as a secret. Because and on later levels um you'll see it more and more frequently because you'll come across enemies that are just like completely impervious. And that last is the exit. So yeah, another another lengthy level, but uh, yeah, definitely the hardest of the four because you know there's no tutorial on unless you read the magazine. There's not really a tutorial to explain Eric's and uh, Olaf's skills. If you didn't read the magazine, you'd have to find them out by yourself. So yeah, how about that? That is um, that's the end of the demo. Um, yeah, it's it's a weird thing to say, but definitely by playing this, 
it has it did encourage me to play the full thing i do remember did i get the full game on for my birthday i think i did i must have done but yeah um, anyway, oh yeah, sorry, more importantly, the conversation. Who are those weird looking guys? And in fact, are the good games? I don't know, but did you check out their hairdos? And people say that we need haircuts. But yeah, honestly, I know it's a weird thing to compare because I know people don't really talk about demos in such a weird passion that I do I know very weird but it's a great that like, this was a great sort of like prototype to see what the game was all about gave you you know gave you the full story gave you four very different levels gave the you know the you know kind of humorous as well and uh, yeah how, and how long did that recording do like even even though I knew what I was doing it still took over 30 minutes so yeah quite quite a long one Three-headed monkey, hello, how you doing? So, um, why am I waiting for this to continue loading? I honestly don't know. Because I know what's going to happen next. So keep in mind, four-level demo. The only thing it doesn't say about it is, um, it doesn't even give you a message. It doesn't say, like, um, congratulations, you beat the four demo. Now try out the full game. Instead, it's this. I don't know why I'm hyping this up because it's not really hype worthy. Yeah, it basically takes you back to the beginning, dialogue inclusive, and uh, yeah, that's kind of it. I mean, you can loop the whole thing, but why of why on earth would you want to do that? So that concludes our currently demo section. I hope you enjoyed watching it.